Hello all, Jeff here with a new video. Welcome to the first part of my review of the January update of Forza Motorsport 7. We, we are checking out the free January Spotlight card, which is the 2018 number Audi number one Audi Sport RS3 LMS. But that's not it. If you did the De December um, Spotlight Rivals event with the BMW M8 at Nürburgring, you were gifted the E30 BMW N3 Forza Edition as well as the 1998 TVR Cerberus Speed 12. So make sure you check it. Check your message se message center and your gifts if you've done that event as there's no other way you can get the Speed 12 anymore. So let's check it. Well, what, I, what I'm just showing you is the downloading section. Just in case you, you don't download gifted cars often, that, that's what you see on screen. And once that's all good to go, you're fine. So the TVR Cerberus Speed 12. Bone stock trim, it's R-Class 897. This is in the Elite Factory Races Division, but, you know, 597 kilowatts of power does mean you will need to put restrictors, restrictors on the car in order to compete in the Elite Factory Races homologated division. But bone stock, it is very fast. Anyway, the Spotlight Rivals event for this month, yep. The Audi RS3 LMS is at Dubai full. Now it doesn't say on screen, but from watching the Forza monthly stream, the car you'll be gifted this month is the um, Audi R8 LMS Ultra, the Flying Lizard Audi. So, yeah, we already have it in the game, but you know what? It's a gifted car, and if you're running low on credits, it's happy days from that point of view. So in bone stock trim, this thing is S-Class 716. However, it is in the Forza Touring Cars division because it is a touring car under the new TCR regulations that many countries will be using, including Australia. Whether we see this car or not in Australia, who knows? But, um, yeah, cool to have another touring car. So what's it like out on the track? Well, in stock trim, it does feel a bit slow, but then again, if you homologate this thing, it will be... A hell of a lot better, especially from the power point of view. I can I can just tell you can get a lot more power out of this for the division. Um, being S class, you could probably tune it to the top of S class and give it a fair bit of power if you want. I haven't checked the upgrade, so I'm not sure if there's an all-wheel drive swap on the cards. As you can hear, this RS3 has a four-cylinder instead of the five-cylinder you would see in the road car. But anyway, it is a it is a touring car. Um, now, yeah, you just have to complete the one lap, and it, or you can just go for the top of the leaderboards if you like. But um, yeah, so yep, you would give to the car that you know has already been in the game since day one. However, with cars, non Forza Edition cars, you know, not being locked anymore, you can spend them on credits. But as I said before, if you're running low on credits, it's a good chance to get another really good GT car. But yeah, you go. That's me completing a lap in the RS3, and yeah, that's where I stand on the leaderboard. But you know, I've got every single car in the game now. Anyway, for those that don't have it, the 2014 Audi number 45 Flying Lizard Motorsports R8 LMS Ultra, very very good car. It's got the Lamborghini V10 in the middle, so of course it's going to be very good. Fortunately, don't have the new R8 LMS in the game yet, but you know what? A free car is a free car, so happy days from that point of view. Do you know what? We'll test all three of these cars. The Stig hasn't driven the Flying Lizard R8 yet, so he's going he's gonna to get the opportunity to drive it before we drive the new ones. So, here we go. It's a bit cloudy out at the Top Gear test track today, and obviously this thing is not all-wheel drive like a regular R8, but then again, it's a race car. You don't really need all-wheel drive. You just, you know adding way too much weight but um this car is actually very very good you know it's got acres of grip the braking's really good and the tunability is there for the Forza GT division to give it a lot more power because you know the Lamborghini V10s whether that's in this Audi R8 the Gallardos or the Huracan it's on the best cars in the straight line in the division so it might help you here Anyway, we go on a hammerhead. That's taken very nicely. Nice work. So, yeah, overall, very, very good car. Would be nice to have a new R8 GT car, but what can you do? We might get it later on, but 
you know, it's, you know, we would like more ca new cars, but then again, this thing sounds really, really good in Forza Motorsport 7. That V10 always sounds glorious, whether that's in a Lamborghini or an Audi R8. But what time is this thing going to do? So it's a 112.27, so that's not bad. Overall, a very good time around the Top Gear test track for a bone stock GT car. We'll see how, how that fares on the leaderboard later on, but next up it is the Spotlight car. You've already seen it in action, the Audi RS3 LMS. What's it like a Top Gear? Obviously being front wheel drive, doesn't launch too well, but that, that's expected. Most touring cars are front wheel drive, past, present. So, you know what? It's all about the grip, and this has acres of grip, so you won't be complaining about that. So, and it's always great to have new race cars in the game as well. So, you know, keep them coming, turn 10. Keep up the spotlight cars, whether we get the, you know, the new Commodore and the Mustang V8 supercars as spotlight cars, who knows? But then again, we do need new track as well. So maybe Turn 10 could give us a spotlight track or two. That'd be cool. But anyway, under the brakes of the hammerhead, you know, nice and composed, this little thing. You know, despite being front wheel drive, it, it is very, very grippy. So, yeah, I'd just like to see what the tunability is like for this thing, because I remember doing um, a few touring car races with some mates on Forza a while back. And I was just making speed build after speed build after speed build for pretty much every single car and I'd love to do the same for this thing. So, yeah, very composed. As we go into Gambon, we'll, we'll get the time, almost clipping the tire wall and it would end up being a 117.7. Then again, it's low S-Class. Finally, the TBR Cerberus Speed 12. One of only two cars that, it, that were you know, this car was one of only two cars that were U-Class in bone stock trim on Forza Motorsport 2. And as you can see, this thing has loads and loads of power going going wide at the first turn. That's you know, kind of expected when you've got a car with this much power. You know, very hard to, to control out of the tighter corners, but once you're in mid-corner or in a straight, you're laughing. And the brakes are actually surprisingly pretty good as well. So yeah, I mean this is this car was a barn find on Forza Horizon 4. Yep, featured on the newer Horizon 4 before Forza Motorsport 7. The, but yeah, that's not the first time that's happened. Anyway, do the follow through. You know, very nicely. Yeah, sometimes you have to um, ease off the throttle through there, which is you don't have to do in many cars. But anyway. We go through the penultimate corner into Gambon. Just a little wide, but it would end up being a 109.795, which would put it third fastest on the leaderboard. Not bad at all. Now the flying lizard R8, it, you know, it was you know about a second and a half slower than the M8, but I bet the Porsche RSR. In regards to the RS3. It was um, a second slower than the 997 um, GD3 RS 4.4, 4.0, but it was a second faster than the Hot Wheels Mustang. But anyway, there you have it. There's the three cars that the Stig just tested. But yeah, be on the lookout for the review of the Barrett Jackson car pack coming very, very soon, so stay tuned. If you like the video, smash the thumbs up button. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and if you want to see more, subscribe and tap the notification icon. Anyway, this is Jeff here, and happy racing. Cheers.